Alright class, let's do some video game math. Take the game Advanced Wars, plus the game Dofus, plus the game Wakfu, plus all the Pokemon games ever made, and divide all that with competitive chess, and voila, you've got the NFT game Aurori. Aurori is a free-to-play tactic-based role-playing game built on the Solana blockchain. Launched in 2021, Aurori had instant success with one of the largest IDOs in Solana's history. They say if you want to know the real vibe of a project, you go into its community and you find some OGs. OGs like Rafiki, the number one content creator and Aurori educator who's been covering Aurori since its launch. The current gameplay right now is Aurori Tactics, and I think it's kind of important to mention that Aurori is not just one game. They're trying to build some sort of franchise, so again, like Enkama or like Riot Games, for example, where they're trying to create assets between all of their games. There's so many elements to Aurori, including an in-game marketplace for NFT selling and trading of Aurorians and Nefties. The team has also released gamified staking, allowing holders to send their Aurorians out on expeditions to find Nefty eggs, Aurori tokens, and much more. The game is like a time track game. So every action costs time. For anybody who played like Dungeons and Dragons, uh, it's exactly the same. So Aurori is very tactical at that level. And it's really what I really like because you can really yeah, dive deep into the strategy. No, for me, it's, uh, it's like chess. I call it chess on steroids mixed with a game called Dofus and Wakfu. And uh, whoever I've shown the trailer of Aurori or videos of Aurori to always refer back to like, oh, if this is like Dofus, I will spend my life there. <laughs> also, there will be a land sale for Aurori, but their approach is a little bit different. On contrary to most projects out there, they're not selling the land before the game is out and people have explored the lands. Aurorians will have priority on the mint. We still don't know how they will be minted. We still don't know how they will be sold. It's just having an Aurorian will give you priority on the sale. Aurori is a massive project that needs to build out their game the right way. I had a chance to talk with the community leader Wolfgang on the approach Aurori is taking towards project development. They are trying to build a fun game and then focusing on the quality of the game because majority of the crypto games, they are either Ponzi-like or they have poor quality that normally won't attract non-crypto natives to try it out. Now, Aurori came out of the gate on fire, selling out on all 10,000 Aurorians along with the whole space talking about the Aurori project. But lately, things look to have slowed down a bit. From the outside, it looks like Aurori is not marketing much but it's because they don't want to they don't want to oversell a game and then have people waiting forever you know people are really kind in Ori. the core community which is invested uh, is super friendly super attentionate super compassionate we even have like a section on discord about well-being and things like this it's just a really cool community and the the ogs are really like super super friendly Make sure to follow Rafiki as he continues to produce content to educate the space on all things Aurori. Want to go even deeper down the Aurori rabbit hole? Well, go ahead and check out the Manifesto, Aurori's 51-page white paper. And also for daily content, check out at Aurori Daily. Aurori is on the right path right now by not rushing their game out before it's done cooking. And even though it's a bear market, the Aurori community is giving off bullish vibes towards the long-term potential of Aurori. If you're looking for a happy game with fun little forest creatures and magical little elves, then look somewhere else because I'm talking about Undead Blocks. Undead Blocks is a kill-to-earn first-person shooter zombie game inspired by Call of Duty Zombies. The OG Call of Duty Zombies lasted 15 years and 32 maps. Activision has moved away from their zombie franchise and we're bringing back all of that nostalgia. Players can use weapon loadout NFTs to kill zombies and participate in daily leaderboards and challenges to earn gold Z-Bucks. These gold Z-Bucks can then be used to purchase in-game items and weapons or swapped out for other cryptocurrencies. You can also earn standard Z-Bucks, which will allow you to level up your weapons and build equity in your in-game assets. In the current free-to-play version, waves of zombies swarm in every day suburban neighborhood with a single goal to dine on the flesh of you the player the zombies get more and more difficult the longer you last even the most pro gamers will probably find it a challenge to last very long trust me i got my ass kicked those motherfuckers are no joke at the moment there's only one neighborhood level but wagyu games has more maps in the works as we speak now there's gonna be three modes of play you've got your solo mode 
your squad mode, where you battle with friends, and your speed run mode, where players have to complete a set number of waves as fast as they can. Now, if you've played shooters in the past, this will all feel very familiar to you. However, what makes Undead Blocks really unique is that Grant, the executive director, has a background in banking, so you know they're putting a strong focus on the economics of the game. I was working at M&T Bank. I was basically a director in the FP&A division. Before that, I was at Goldman Sachs for three years. I was securities lending analyst. I figured that I could build a more stable and secure tokenomics model. You generate revenue, and then you use a portion of it to compensate your players for the sweat equity they put in your title, and then do what as a traditional gamer you've always done, which is collect skins, make microtransaction purchases, and that's really gonna give us a unique first market mover advantage, I believe. Let's break down how the tokens will work. There are gold Z-Bucks, a currency that you earn by playing that can be used to purchase special in-game items, and those can be withdrawn into cryptocurrencies. Then you have your standard Z-Bucks, which are used in-game to upgrade weapons and to purchase items, but can't be withdrawn into actual crypto, and then finally, there's the undead token. This is the governance token, which gives you voting rights as well as additional special in-game access. However, Grant and the team are implementing something that I haven't seen any other game do yet. They're calling it Stake to Mint, where if you stake your undead token, you'll receive a free loadout NFT that you can use in the game. Now, stick with me here because once you get this part, things get really exciting. You can purchase your undead tokens and stake them. When you stake them, you have the ability to mint a weapon loadout immediately. It's sort of like Undead Blocks is lending you an NFT to play and earn with as a thank you for staking. Then you'll earn gold Z-Bucks and standard Z-Bucks daily from playing with your loadout NFTs. You can then use your standard Z-Bucks from playing to upgrade your weapon loadout, thus increasing the value of the NFT. On top of that, you'll still receive the undead rewards earned at the end of the staking period. This concept is super exciting because it will drive down the circulating supply of the undead token and to help stabilize the value. They're also building a lending program that they call the arms dealer program. Don't worry, it's not what it sounds like you get to keep your actual arms. However, you can actually rent out your loadout NFTs to other players and split the gold Z-Bucks that they earn with them. Now, if you're familiar with scholarships and guilds, this concept should be pretty familiar to you. What makes it even cooler is that you get to keep 100% of the standard Z-Bucks as well so that you can further upgrade your weapons that you lent to other people. At the end of the day, there are a lot of exciting things going on around this game that has the industry buzzing. They recently received a large investment from Animoca Brands. There's a playable beta with ongoing tournaments that you can earn from right now. The executive director is an ex-banker who really understands the economic side. They were actually recently featured on blockchain conversations. Shameless plug. The community seems to really be thriving at the moment and the blockchain side will be handled by Immutable X, which means no gas fees on your transactions. So there are some really exciting things going on right now with undead blocks and on the horizon for undead blocks, but you don't have to wait. You can actually play it right now. Simply go to undeadblocks.com Download the beta release of the game and start playing. Do you remember the game Conker's Bad Fur Day on Nintendo 64? Well, I do. It had great blend of action and adventure. The great mighty With a nice healthy serving of a dull humor. Now this is what I call a pot pumpkin. Fast forward 21 years and now we have My Pet Hooligan. A Genesis NFT collection of 8,888 pet hooligans. They all have that same vibe and humor, just like Conker did on that bad fur day. Now each hooligan provides access as a playable 3D avatar in the play to earn metaverse, the rabbit hole. Built with Unreal 5, the rabbit hole will be a massive 3D world that will be hosted in the Epic Game Store. My Pet Hooligan is produced by AMGI Studios, a creative web 3 entertainment company composed of artists and creators from Pixar, Disney, and ILM. My Pet Hooligans minted back in December of 2021. And on Friday, this Friday, August 19th of 2022, there will be an airdrop of version 1.1 to all Genesis holders. Now, My Pet Hooligan is not your typical Web3 3D avatar project by any means. This team at AMGI Studios has created an app called Emmy. Emmy is an app that allows you to be your NFT. Using your facial expressions, real-time animation, and augmented reality, it's a mobile platform where you can bring your NFTs to life in the metaverse. If you own a pet hooligan, you get access to its FBX files, which will allow you to create your own custom animations for your pet hooligan. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we are witnessing the next evolution of Avatar projects, where the community can create content as the NFT they hold in their wallet, and they can create this content any way they like. I've seen pet hooligans presenting crypto gaming reports. Yo, what's reports. up? It's Jay Dunk. Today, I want to talk about the experiments that are happening on the blockchain. I've seen pet hooligans demonstrating funky fresh dance moves. There's even a My Pet Hooligan song. You already know we some hooligans. What am I to be but a hooligan? Catch me in the street with them hooligans. Say you down for the cops, gotta prove it. But my all-time favorite hooligan video has to be this one. Looking forward to Friday, August 19th for their version 1.1 airdrop to all Genesis holders. Until next video, this is Crypto Buffalo, hunting for alpha every day of the week here on Hard Fork Gaming.